Now, leaders of the world's biggest tech firms, including TikTok, Google and Meta, have signed a pact on artificial intelligence at the Munich Security Conference. It's aimed at preventing AI deep fakes from sabotaging elections. Now, 20 businesses that are building generative AI models have pledged to appropriately address AI content found on their platforms and to detect the distribution of AI content and to build cross-industry resilience to tackle deceptive AI election content. Well, about 4 billion people worldwide are expected to vote in elections this year, and the pledge is a recognition that artificial intelligence poses a risk to elections. And here in the US, Democratic Congresswoman Yvette Clark is working on a bill to regulate AI and politics. She approves of the tech accord and says that Congress must do more to ensure the integrity of elections amid the rise of AI technology. Thousands of people took to the streets of Senegal's capital, Dhaka, demanding presidential elections take place soon. The protests follow the country's top court blocking President Macky Sall's attempt to postpone the election originally scheduled for this month. The controversial decree, which was backed by parliament, triggered a political crisis in Senegal, once regarded as a bastion of democracy in West Africa. African Union heads of state are in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, for the first day of a two-day summit. AU Chair Moussa Faki Muhammad called on leaders to tackle conflicts on the continent and condemned a series of coups in some African countries as unconstitutional. Riots have broken out in The Hague as rival groups of Eritreans clashed outside of a cultural centre. Dutch police cars were attacked and officers used tear gas to try and restore calm. Vehicles were set alight and windows of buildings were smashed. Long-standing tensions within Eritrean communities in different parts of the world have recently flared up. Critics of the Eritrean government say that so-called cultural festivals that it organises are in fact propaganda to raise funds for an oppressive regime. Uh, so have a look at the papers, see what's making headlines on this Sunday morning as you uh, get up and uh, maybe get the papers ready to have a spot of breakfast. Uh, the death of the Kremlin critic, which we're reporting this morning, Alexei Navalny, continues to make the headlines today. According to the Sunday Times, Russian intelligence officers are reported to have visited his prison two days before he died there. Human rights campaigners have claimed that the FSB disconnected and dismantled security cameras and listening devices. Yes, we'll have a little bit more on that uh, story later this morning. Prince William remains angry about the public criticisms his brother has made in front of the fam made of the family in recent years. That's according to the Sunday Mirror, which says William would reject any offer of help made by the Duke. And the Observer highlights a new report about working from home. It says that it opens up the possibility of eating healthier and having lower blood pressure. But it also warns, and I think many people who work from home would echo this, that, it, that remote workers are more likely to eat snacks, uh, drink and smoke more and put on weight. Obviously, maybe not all of the above, um, but well, certainly snacking's fridge, easier, mm, isn't it? The fridge is just there and then you go, well, I need a break. Yeah. Just wander to the fridge So for someone a quick who break. never works from home, which I don't, <laughs> yeah. but there's always stuff to eat in the yeah. office as well. It's just far too close.